This is David Gunn. I'm giving a presentation on the lacrimal system, the periorbital and, uh, and orbital contents. So the development of the lacrimal gland. The uh, lacrimal gland develops from multiple solid external buds in the anterior and suprolateral orbit. Uh, it's branching and canalizing to form ducts and alveoli. The gland is small and non-functional until approximately six weeks after birth. In terms of the gross anatomy of the lacrimal gland, it's an exocrine gland with a large orbital and a smaller palpable part around the edge of the aponeurosis of the levator palpebrae superioris. The orbital part is almond-shaped and it lies in the lacrimal fossa in the anterolateral part of the roof of the orbit. The palpable part is smaller, about a third of the size of the orbital part, and it extends into the upper eyelid. Eight to twelve ducts pass from the orbital to the palpable part to open into the superior fornix, and additional ducts open independently from the palpable part into the superior fornix. Clinically, this can be seen with the use of fluorescine staining uh, in the suprolateral fornix, and release of the lacrimal gland secretions can be identified from dilution of fluorescein in those areas. It's an important structure to be aware of when performing surgery in this area. The lacrimal gland is a lobulated tubular acinar structure. Lobules are separated by connective tissue septae. On section, the acini are seen as round or tube-shaped masses of columnar cells with central lumens. These are epithelial secretory cells and they're surrounded by incomplete layers of myoepithelial cells. The apical and middle regions um, of the cytoplasm of the cells contains large number of secretory granules which are mainly serous. The lacrimal gland is supplied by the lacrimal artery. It enters posteriorly. It's a branch of the ophthalmic artery. Sometimes there's also some arterial supply from the infraorbital artery from the maxillary. Venous drainage is via the ophthalmic vein and the lymphatic drainage joins that of the conjunctiva and passes to the superficial carotid, parotid as with the uh, superior uh, lateral two-thirds of the eyelid. The lacrimal gland innervation is complex and it's probably the hardest thing to learn about the lacrimal gland's anatomy. It's easiest to first think about the parasympathetic supply. So starting on the right-hand side of the diagram, the parasympathetic fibres from the uh, lacrimatory nucleus of the facial nerve uh, in the pons uh, is sort of the start of this chain. The fibres exit the brainstem with the seventh cranial nerve and leave the seventh cranial nerve as the greater petrosal nerve. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash iop dot vision. I hope you enjoy this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.